<laughs> Aha. What are these strings? It's your boy. Mm, 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 mm. Rosa, bring you guys another video here today. But don't wait. Just, just wait. Don't wait. Just wait. No, you wait. New video, different kind of video today, guys. Today, um, I want to do something different. It's a breakdown of a 40 kill game that I had um like a month or two ago um a lot of people have been asking just tips on how to play warzone tips on how to get high kills tips on how to do this you know do that how to get better and so i think doing some sort of a walkthrough or some sort of um explaining of why i decided to put myself in this position or that position or push this or shoot at this at this time um and i'm gonna try my best to, to do that today in today's video so guys this is my first time ever doing this so bear with me um, I'm very new to this. I feel very uncomfortable doing this. I don't know why just because I'm not used to it And so I just feel like I'm not good at explaining things I feel like I'm not a good teacher and so we're gonna try our best and we're just gonna get into it So right here we got this this is um, I had a 40 kill game with the m13 now I was using the M13. Um, we landed hangers. Hangers is a lot of cash. I like to land places that have a lot of cash. The brown building outside hangers. Once you get a lot of cash, you can get a load up. There was no buy stations on that side. So now we went to super, set up super. It's hard really to explain on what, what to do with super because you just need to stick together as a team. And you just need to flow together as a team and just fucking go. But once I get my load out, I'll explain how and where and what I was doing to um to get a lot of kills. So let's get into it. <clears throat> All right, rise, so I, rise, rise, rise again. So I have six kills um, with 137 left. This was quads when there was 200. It was the 200 person quads. So let's just find a, a decent spot. Okay, right here, man. So I think one of the biggest things when you are playing Warzone is that you always want to be the team that third parties. You always want to be the third party team. You know, the more you third party, the better things go in your way. The more you can keep on moving throughout the map. Um. When you want to, you want to keep a UAV and bounties going 24/7. If that's the case, you get a lot more kills. You see a lot more people on the map. You always have direction. If you don't have a UAV, if you don't have a bounty going, you just don't know where to go. You're just, I mean, you just, you just have to get lucky at that point. You just don't know where to go. So direction is good. You want to have direction. So first off, start off with a bounty or UAV and start moving. Okay, so we we heard a loadout by the blue warehouse warehouses and now people are fighting. We hear them, so we're gonna push it. And so I'm right ahead of the boys. I see people fighting. I'm staying on a head glitch. I want to make sure that these guys don't push me. So people are fighting. That's a lot down from two different teams. So I know that that guy's knocked. That means there's at least. That means there's at least. Um, one or two more people. I already have one knocked on the other side of the wall that I didn't get finished and then he just got knocked. So that means there's at least one more player. So I think one of the biggest things is that you want to know where everybody's at before you put yourself in a situation. You want to keep track of the amount of people. You don't always want to, you do not want to push into a situation where there are a lot of unknowns. You know, you don't want to run into a warehouse where there's four people. You don't know where the people are at. You know, you always want to put yourself in the best possible position to either get the kills, trade out the kills, or get a two-piece, three-piece, four-piece, okay? So I know that he, he ended up dying. I didn't even know what the fuck was happening. So I know there's at least one guy left. And there he is. He's sticking the rest. So that's... I don't even know how many kills I got. I got like six or seven what kills right there. the fuck just fucking happened? All right. So we'll go to the next spot. So we keep on moving. I know we don't have anything rolling. We just get a res. People are shooting over by Boneyard. So we're going to push towards Boneyard. A lot of bullets. I, I really don't like the M13 as much as I used to. I'm surprised all my high kill games have pretty much been with the M13, which is surprising. But it's a head, headshot machine. If you can headshot, it's a fries. So. You're dropping your money? Oh, wait, never mind. UAVs are rolling. Keep UAVs going 24-7. There's a team that we saw from Boneyard decided to push us. We hear them outside. So I, I pushed out, want to try and at least knock one, get back inside. There's a problem, and I do the same thing all the time, is that I always want to be a playmaker, right? I always want to be a playmaker. 
So I push into push into a place and I always want to get a two piece, three piece, four piece, right? But right here, I was a little bit more disciplined and I've been trying to get better at it as time goes on or as, you know, as, <clears throat> as the game gets or grows or people get better and better is that you always want to try to, you know, knock one. You don't necessarily need to have the finish. To get the finish, it takes an extra three seconds and another 10 bullets to get the finish, right? And just think of what you could do with that extra three seconds. I understand people get res, people have self res, all that good shit. But at the same time, you also have that three seconds to heal, reload, reposition, so you can take out the rest of the squad. So here, I wanted to knock one and then get inside. I knocked this guy's armor off, I mess up my C4. If I hit, if I throw the C4 out, I think that's a knock. So, but I reposition here. Oh, there's two more out there. I get my knock, pop some heals. I should pop some heals. Full team here at the doors. Full team reposition, the doors. pop some heals. That's one knocked at least. He just got res. That's okay. That is what it is. He's weak. He's one shot. That's a knock. These other guys around the corner are weak because they just got knocked. There's got to be at least one more. So that's three. Now we're missing one more player. So you just got to make sure you look around. I mean, teams are shooting at. So being able to reposition, being able to, to, to shoot one, knock one, and reposition. So that's why I was like third point. And that's why I don't like rocket and vehicles too much because... I prefer to position myself um, to where they don't know. Because if you throw a stun, that's an easy two, maybe even three piece, you know, if you have a good air shot. You throw a stun, you stun two or three of them, but ba boom and then you can reposition, heal, reload, do whatever, and then wipe out the rest of the squad, wait for your teammates, etc. Watch out by UAV. Keep on UAVs flooded. I don't, I mean, you don't have to have self reses, guys. Listen, you don't have to have self reses. I know a lot of people are very, very, you know, they're like, holy shit, I want self res all the time. Listen, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Buy UAVs, keep them flowing. If you have a shit ton of money, then buy self -reds. But if you still have a gulag, eh, keep the UAVs so. Okay, so we see all these guys towards storage town. Decide not to push them. Decide go towards the loadout. So right there, I personally am a restock person. I don't like ghost. Recently, I just started using Ghost again just to change some things up. But first loadout, use Overkill. Second loadout, I use Restock. When I use Restock, basically you get a new, st you get two, uh, another stun, another C4 every 50 seconds, 50 or 55 seconds. That's very, very, very crucial in team fights. And um, stuns can save your life, man. Stuns can save your life, same as Ghost. You know, it's you know to the each of their own. They both have pros, they both have cons, right? But having Restock, you, that means you get basically. Um, new stuns and c4s every single team fight because they replenish so fast so right now i have 15 kills with 116 people left that's insane that's literally insane sorry guys i'm gonna keep moving i have a lot of kills so i noticed that there's people over here there's choppers over here people fighting over here we got uavs going you want to be the team that third parties you know what i mean you want to be the team that third parties is able to get a knock there get a finish because i have I have time. There's nobody else shooting at me. I have the opportunity to get the finish. That's why I get the finish there. There's nobody else looking at me. There's nobody else, you know, I'm, my life's not in danger right there. So that's why I get the finish right. Make sure I secure that kill. So now these other guys are behind the wall. My teammates are putting some fire on. So now make sure you use my utilities. Get some stuns, get some nades or uh, C4s rolling. Now that's three total knocks. Now there's one more. So I'm missing one player, which heard out there. You should always want to put yourself in the best possible position in every single fight. That's just the whole goal. So that guy was knocked. Either he has self res or, or that's a different team. Now that's another. Now right there, you want to make sure you are aware that since you knocked that guy, you think that's the fourth player from that first team which it may or may not be. I mean, with the recent updates, it will say squad wipe. But if it doesn't, you know, you know, so you have that guy that's knocked, but at the same time, you threw a stun, you got it. Um, you got a, an armor stun hit marker. That means there's more players. So that means there's a whole nother team. So you got to make sure you're just aware. So that means there could be three other guys sitting on the other side of this wall and the other lane by the storage containers or behind the truck. You know what I mean? And plus you're on three threat.
putting myself in a, a, a decent position to where I can't get shot down the alleyway if there's another guy there and just playing a lane almost, you know what I mean? So I was able to, to just get that one kill and save it for the boys. So we're at 23 kills with 98 left. That's insane. This was, uh, I was live streaming when this happened. So we don't have any UAVs. So we're going to grab this bounty. I hope. I think I do. You, you, you just got res, so you can hit it. All right, so that's the bounty. So it gives us direction. You always want to have direction, and I always want to know where you're at. So before, I'm pretty sure I heard there was a cluster strike. Yeah, there's a cluster strike going on. So you know there's at least two teams you're fighting. So you are the third party. You always want to be the third party. You don't want to get third or fourth party because... I mean, you could, you can always make it out of that, but it's just such a shit show. Now, these guys are on top of Virgin Towers. I don't remember what I do, but we'll see. So, this guy's over peaking. That's an easy knock. I just got to make sure you're always aware of the other buildings, just because these buildings, anybody can shoot you from it, almost any angle. Guys, what up? I have dead silence. So, the reason why I'm making this play is that these guys are a man down. So, if I can work the 1v3, potentially, I have dead silence. I'm getting up, moving into position. I know they're resing. Now, when I get up top, I'm not 100% sure. Let me show. Let me see. So, this is a hit fire class. So, now that should be a team wipe. I know, I know with the recent updates, it'll tell you if it's a team wipe or not. But that is actually a team wipe right there. So, and now, these guys are fighting people across. Now that you know, there's a team across. So, that's one knock. You got to be careful when you're doing this. That's two knock. You saw at least oh, one shit. more up rest there. Please, rest, please. You saw one more up there. So you know that's a total of four. You knocked two, someone crossed, and then you got sniped. So always make I sure that two. you One's know how many people are up there before you do it. So now it's always important to know the count. Know the count of people. I'm going to go up. So now I'm just a fucking savage. I'm on a heater, so I'm just full sending everything. Just start shooting at a mic when you're up there, bro. There, basically, I'm telling them just to be distraction. That way, when I get up there, I can... um. Full send. If you guys know, know, once you get to the top of the stairs, you don't have to actually fully go up and around to open up the door. You can actually open the door from the stairs going down. So you can head glitch those first stairs. A lot of people don't know that. I don't know if I do that right here or not, but just, just a heads up. So right here, you can do a little hop around. A lot of these guys don't have armor. That's two kills. I think I hop back in. Reposition. Now it's a 1v2 situation. One has a sniper that we know that because that's the guy that knocked me earlier. The reason why I did that, I'm repositioning myself, resetting the fight. Now it's a 1v2 straight up. I'm looking for information. I hear one. Kill this guy. Now it's a 1v1. Hop in heels. Throwing a stun. I thought it was a stun, I'm pretty sure. But I'm throwing a gas grenade in case he decides to push me because the other guy called me out weak. Basically, what I normally do is I stun, you know, the the push because that's where the original guy, or the, the guy that I just killed, made me weak. That's why I stunned it. Now I can reheal, reposition if I have to. And the last kid's right here. So that's how you take out team wise, man. You just got to do it one person. If you're lucky, you get a two piece. If you're even lucky, you get a three piece, right? So you take him one person at a time. You know, you don't always have to go for the finishes. Right there, I did. I think that was a little greedy for me to do that when I got those finishes, those first two right here. It was a little little greedy for me to get this two-piece. Like, I got the two knocks. Like, that's okay. They don't have armor. You know, I could use them to for bait, honestly, for the other guys to pull four. I don't need those finishes. The other guy was farther than mine or a little bit quicker. I would have died right there, 100%. All right, let's move on. So I got UAV flowing. We got a bunch of money rolling. We notice people are coming in from up top of the hill. These guys are clueless. They don't know what's going on. I pre-gas it. Get them stuck in the gas. Normally, I'd have a stun grenade. He's stuck in there. He has no idea. Now, it's two knocks, so they could have teammates. Some, a lot of people rock go, so it's best to go into every fight thinking that there's a full squad of either duos, trios, or quads, whatever game mode that you are playing in. I always like to pre-stun or pre-gas or pre-flash everything that you're pushing. It just, why not? It helps you have the edge in the fight. You know what I mean? Especially since I did kill the first one 
His teammate's gonna call me out down the hill, down the hill, and boom. Throw the gas grenade, throw the stun grenade, he's stunned. You got the kill. Now That's there's an my teammate died. My teammate died up top. A rat down underneath because the zone's pushing. They have to jump off the tower. Don't have to force the fight. Wait 20 seconds. Wait a minute. Do whatever you got to do. Just don't push unnecessary fights like this tower because there's no point. They have to jump off in, you know, 15 seconds. Notice the solo right there. I notice that's not this team. I notice there's still a guy up top. There has to be. There has to be. There's one. Is there still more over there? Or I have no idea. And then, no so since that was a knock, there has to be more. There has to be at least one more. But it could have been a guy gulagging. It could have been a guy, you know, that just got rezzed. Or it wasn't a wipe. So, we're still missing once. You yeah, always want to be aware. Always keep track yeah. of the amount of people that you kill. I mean, now, again, with the new update, it tells you squad wipe this, squad wipe that. So, always keep an eye on that for your screen. Now, right now, I have 33 kills with 47 people left. I noticed a lot of people are on this radar. I'm pushing up towards um, these buildings. I want to make sure I focus out the kids on the bottom level first. That way, you know, I don't want to get screwed from the kids up top. So, you always want to make sure that, you know, I mean, we're pushing underneath that. In order for the people up top to see us, they have to overextend. They have to overpeak. And that's not a good angle for them. So, you always want to put yourself, again, in a better position. I mean, this is the best position possible. I... Now, looking at it, maybe I'd push the team up top. But there's a solo down low, and there's three or four people up top. So, I'm going to focus the solo first so he doesn't cock us, you know, while we're running past the zone or doing whatever we've got to do to kill this team up top. And that's exactly what I do here. So, I noticed that he's on ground floor. A lot of, for some reason, people still don't know. I mean, you should know by now if you play Warzone consistently or um, all the time is that um, I know he's on floor on the floor level because the UAV just has a dot. If there's an arrow above the dot, above the dot, um, that means he's up a level. And if he's below, that means he's lower level. So it's on the same same floor. It's very useful information. I always pay attention to that. So I knew this guy was here. It's a squad wipe, team wipe. And then we just got to be careful for the team up top. Now, again, there's no reason to even shoot at these guys or even um do anything to these guys because we have to hold them why not hold them they have very little of the um of the building left and so we're just gonna hold them i think i noticed one i don't know if one's on the floor or not though we should send the rest send the rest so what happened was is that i wanted tuck to hit this buy station over here and then he ends up going to the warehouse. <laughs> he ends up going to the warehouse and he ends up dying. But I wanted him to send the res right here. I just didn't. Because he was already on that side. I'm not I told him. So I know that guy doesn't have any armor up top. I'm just going to sit here and hold this whole squad. I don't think I've gulagged yet either. So one pushed. I should really focus this kid down low. Just because he's more of an important kill. Reposition. Right now I should be healing. Reposition, heal, heal, heal. There's still people coming from the big tower. So now I'm in a shit show, man. What's now we're back up against the wall. We have to cross an open field. Like somehow cross, but now we're in a shitty, shitty, shitty spot. In all honesty, we probably shouldn't even held those guys on the top of the roof. We probably should have crossed the fire or crossed the blue warehouses, forced these kids up blue warehouses, because right now we are in a very shitty position, very shitty spot. There's a cluster on top of us, zones at our back. And we have to cross the open field to fire and then some more. So. And I noticed this. I literally just said, wow, we're in a shitty fucking spot. So I'm trying to push up to whatever cover that I can get. Knock one. Make sure I get this kill. I noticed the guy on the UAV is inside the building. That's a very important kill. If I would have got that kill, it would have been... And I end up dying right there. I end up over peaking. What I could have done is I went back on the head glitch, or I could have stayed on the head glitch the whole time. That's what I would have done different right there. I should have stayed on the head glitch, maybe work towards the head glitch. I made that kid weak, maybe use the opportunity for me to cross the fire. If I could cross the fire, if there's nobody there, I noticed my teammate down there, maybe 
stay on the head glitch, maybe get that knock, but I made that kid in the blue warehouse weak. If I make that guy in the blue warehouse weak, maybe cross the fire, take the truck, go to pool, then maybe heal and regain from there. But end up dying right there. <clears throat> end up winning my gulag. And I end up waiting, I think, about 30 seconds for my loadout to drop. No. And I have 37 kills with 29 people left. God damn, that's an insane fucking game. So my loadout's right here. I get the, my fully loaded class. My fully loaded, I take off tacklers or off the, the um off the ground and I put fully loaded perk on. I don't think you necessarily need fully loaded perk on the SMG because it gives you 45 bullets, then also it gives you your starter pistol ammo. So that's another 30 bullets. You have 45-30. Knows a guy, land right next to me. Make sure I get this kill. And here we go. Now, I realize right now, watching this video and you know, looking back, I should never have left gas station. I should never have left gas station. Look at, if you look at zone right here, gas station is in my favor. All these people in storage town, all these people in pool have to come my way. And there's 27 people left in this fifth circle. That's a lot of fucking people. So, my idiot face head, in my situation, I'm thinking, okay, I need to get a kill. If people are fighting, I'm going to force these kills. That way, if I somehow catch them fighting, if I can third party perfectly, if I can third party perfectly, I kill the last two people and that's two squad wipes. That's the goal. That's the plan. But, fucks me over. Because I need loot. Because I need armor. Now, I sure as hell don't want to cross the open field yet. So I'm like looking for armor, looking for anything that I can use here. So I'm trying to figure out what I can do here. Let's see what's going on. I don't want to get sniped from this top warehouse. That was my only worry. I say, I'm surprised I even went up there because that's a very, very sketchy spot to go. So I'm like, okay, these guys were fighting over here earlier. I really want to see if I can get some kills here. I think this was pre-drow nerf, by the way. Before Bruin. So I got one. Notice there's one right there. Shit on this kid real quick. See, now I have no armor. And I have to force this kill. I have to push around the corner. And I have to force this 1v1. The reason why I do that is people down the alleyway. And it's just my better chances of surviving is to kill this fucking guy. Which I do. Well, there's more right there. So I was so after it here, man. My whole goal was just a third party, third party, third party. Put myself in a better position, ultimately, if I ended up third partying these guys. But I ended ended up getting third party, is what happened. I killed one person from one team, one person from another team, and that put me in a shit sandwich. So, that's the way I die. <laughs> I put myself in a very, very bad spot, but... That's just the way it works. You got to learn from every single mistake. That's one of my th things I try to do. Every time you make a mistake or every time you die, you need to learn from every single mistake. Um, I would never do that again. They weren't fighting yet, so why would I push that? If they weren't fighting, if there aren't red dots on the minimap, then I don't need to push that. If I don't hear silencers going off, I don't need to push that. And I have zone. So I just got to play, play off them not shooting me, play off them shooting each other because they would have seen each other from this angle to right here, right where this kill cam is. Exactly where this happened. So that's what I would have done different, probably. Sit in gas station, third party, sit bottom window maybe, shoot this way. But this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. This is the first time I've ever broken down why I decided to do something, why did I decide to move forward, why do I decide to, you know, push certain ways. Um, and I'm not sure if the video will be good or not. Honestly, I have no idea. I have no idea what the response is going to be. I have no idea how you guys are going to like it. Um, so if you guys want to let me know down low in the comments below, I really, really, really appreciate that. I really would, man. So again, I was just breaking down how to be a better player, why I push certain situations, what I could have done different, what I could have done better, and overall, um, just how to get better at Warzone. I think these pointers um, will help you guys out. I know a lot of it seems pretty self-explanatory, but once you get in game, a lot of that shit doesn't happen for a lot of people. So, again, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I really, it really would mean a lot if you guys seriously were honest with me in the comments. Don't be too harsh. Don't be too harsh. But you can just be honest, okay? That's how I'm asking. A little honesty, okay? But, guys, thank you so much. Make sure you guys like the, like the video. Please, please, please. Let me know. Please, again, let me know what you guys think of the video. Um, what I could have done better. If you guys want me to continue to do these. And so on and so forth. So, guys, thank you very much. 
I hope you guys have a fantastic day, fantastic night. Peace and blessings, you motherfuckers. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video or the next stream, because I stream every single day. You're